Can we trust that the book of Daniel is historically accurate? Folks, welcome back to Prophetic Perspectives. Dave, Tim, and I are going to tackle a question that many people who have the, uh, I say, liberal theological persuasion say is that the book of Daniel is just too accurate prophetically and historically to have been written before the exile. Now that sounds complicated, but the Jewish people had disobeyed God. In about 586 BC, God sent them to Babylon for 70 years of exile because of their sins. And many people believe that the prophecies that God gave Daniel during those seven years, which are about future empires, uh, couldn't possibly have been written at that time. It must have been written hundreds of years later because they came fulfilled. So what is it, guys? Was the book of Daniel written during the 500s B.C. or was it written much later, say, 2-300 B.C.? We obviously believe it was written contemporary with the life of Daniel, and he was in exile there from Israel, living in Babylon. So whether it's under King Nebuchadnezzar, later under King Darius, obviously we have for a brief uh, time uh, Belshazzar. Daniel lived during the reign of some of those Babylonian and then Medo-Persian kings and recorded the prophecies, some of which have already been fulfilled. Right, and some would say he didn't write it because he writes in third person, but he does switch that. But to me, it, it's game over because Jesus says, as Daniel said. Jesus goes back and says, Daniel wrote this. So we can look at that and say, how could Daniel have known all these things the way they happened? Well, God knew everything and God gave him the words for that. So the critics can say what they want to say. But when Jesus said, Daniel wrote this, I trust Daniel wrote this book. And the critics seem to, to take the interpretation mm -hmm. that, well, Bible prophecy isn't real. They're, they're very liberal in their theology, mm -hmm. so to speak. So it's almost a, a lack of faith. It is a lack of faith when you look at the Bible and say, the 31% that's prophecy can't be real. We have to spiritualize it to have these spiritual applications to our lives. They can't be taken literally because how in the world could prophecies given hundreds of years ago actually come true? Well, I think the obvious answer is because it's the God of universe because behind it. Because God is right. God. At, yeah. at one point he scoffs that, uh, that idols could even predict what the future is. He says, go ahead, why don't you all predict right. something that's going to happen? And obviously the false idols right. are mute. Well, let's talk about specifically what God reveals. And first of all, he gives a vision to a pagan king, which I find very interesting. So King Nebuchadnezzar has a vision of a mighty statue, a head of gold, and then he sees all these other metals blended in through the chest and the arms, the, the thigh and the belly, and then the feet, and all of these kingdoms that Daniel actually explains that will sub come after Nebuchadnezzar came to pass. Later, Daniel sees a series of beasts. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about those kingdoms and how they've been fulfilled in human history. Well, that's Daniel 2 and Daniel 7. Daniel 2, for the king, the pagan king, is the human perspective of what's ah. being done. Daniel 7 is the godly perspective, the heavenly perspective of what's happening. He speaks to Daniel with that. But that's one of the keys to this. You look back, we have history. Okay, so what were those kingdoms that they foresaw? Well, you have Babylon. You have the head of gold. The head of gold, you have which the king, was Nebuchadnezzar. Right, he's being, he's being up there. But that's going to, that empire's going to end, and he didn't want it to end. And then you go, in, you go into uh, Persia. You go into Medes and the Persia. So the chest of right. silver. Right, and you go into Greece. Which is the bronze portion of the statue going further down. And again, I, you go into the Roman Empire after that, but the Greece Empire is broken into four, the four generals take that over. When Alexander the Great passes away, you know, young, the four generals take that over. And that's exactly what Daniel says is going to happen. So it sure is. when you look at prophecy, we, we know prophecy is still yet to come in some of it, but in Daniel it's history. We can look back and have history confirm everything that Daniel said. And what's neat about these prophecies is that they were given to Nebuchadnezzar about future kingdoms. Now yeah. let me say, okay, the United States in 200 years will be replaced by the Chinese Empire and that will be taken over by the, the Romanian Empire. I mean, who could say that? But Daniel's prophecies were, were given by God yes. to Nebuchadnezzar and interpreted. So Daniel just did the interpretation. The, the interpretation he credits to God is that the head of gold, the Babylon, will be replaced by the Medo-Persian Empire. That's yeah. exactly what happened. Exactly. A two-part empire. Yeah. It would be replaced by a, the Greek Empire, and that happened. It would be replaced by the Roman Empire. But then that statue says the final phase of it will be ten toes, yes. or where the world will be divided into ten regions, and that hasn't happened yet. So Certainly. it's interesting that Daniel's prophecies fulfill what I love. You always bring up this called the time of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. When the Jewish people lost the control or to rule themselves, because of their sins, it began Nebuchadnezzar's time, about 586 B.C., what's called the time of the Gentiles, Correct. where the Gentiles would rule and reign over uh, the Jewish people <clears throat> all the way into the end of what's called the Tribulation, a seven-year time period where the world is going to experience the worst judgment in history. 
At the very end, and the Antichrist comes up, he's going to rule and reign over the earth during that time until Jesus Christ returns at his second coming and sets up his kingdom. And that ends the time of the Gentiles. That right. ends that statue. That ends right. those four beasts. Correct. It certainly does. So if you want to learn more about the various prophecies that are outlined, we could talk about Daniel chapter 11, which goes through all the conflicts to come mm -hmm. as Daniel is writing them that have already come to pass. They were so amazing that even Alexander the Great said, wow, your yeah. Jewish prophet knew what I was going to accomplish. And, and Alexander was amazed at the God of Israel. Yes. But our good friend Todd Hampson in his book, The Non-Prophet's Guide to the Book of Daniel, has gone through the historical account even of those conflicts in chapter 11. We'd encourage you to get a copy. You can go to the, the number on the screen or to our ChristinProphecy.org website and order a copy. But this is great encouragement that we can trust God's prophetic word to be faithful and true and it's demonstrated in the book of Daniel. Looking back and looking forward. Well, folks, check out Daniel. And uh, if you want to know more information, just check the links below. We'd love it if you'd like, subscribe to this channel. God bless you.